smart woman because yes, you are. You are a smart woman. And we are empowering you today with, oh my God, Eve Torres Gracie. So many of you are like, is this seriously happening? Yes. Former three-time champion, three times, right? Yes, three-time three -time champion. Yeah, three-time champion of, you know, you probably recognize her from Divas, right? The Divas show, the right? Okay. Yes, you're being, okay, so you're being very like, oh my goodness. Okay, Divas champion. Like, yes, that was my thing, but that's not my thing anymore. I just want to ramble this off because I want this to be very clear. Actress, sure. dancer, model, former wrestler, Divas champion. Here's my favorite thing about you. Your whole purpose in life is to serve women. And Eve? You kind of nailed it there. Yeah. <laughs> that Thank you. Is incredible and as you get to know me because we don't know each other you're gonna you're gonna get to know me a little bit through this interview that is exactly what i'm empowering these women who are watching this show to do is to get out of their way get out of their heads get out of their hearts and start serving each other and so that's what this interview is for so without further ado you are the ceo of your life this is what you said on your instagram today hire fire and promote accordingly can you please elaborate Yes. Uh, well, that was actually a repost. I, I saw um, somebody post that and I'm like, this is perfect. This is genius. And I think I make a lot of connections to business and our lives, partly because I am in a family business. So a lot of personal decisions end up being business decisions and vice versa. So there's a little bit of a crossover there, but I thought it was such a great way of um, putting it because it's like, I think of that, it, it, some people may say it doesn't sound that romantic, but that's like how I think of marriage. I'm like, it's kind of like a, a, bit, a partnership, a business partnership, where you have to make a, tons of really important decisions together. There's gonna be financial conversations, there's gonna be different conversations, there's gonna be certain roles and expectations like you would have in a business. Um, so I, I just saw that and I'm like, this is a great way to think about it. It's like your life, why would you treat your life any different than you would treat something that's you know, important to you, like a, like a business that you're starting. And so many, I think it will resonate with a lot of upcoming women and female entrepreneurs because they are doing that they're all about you know their business or what they're building and then they kind of forget wait my my life is a part of my my business and my brand and myself as well so I need to, to you know make just as important decisions um, regarding that as I would with my business yeah and I love that you said you know it doesn't sound very romantic but hey <laughs> you know <laughs> sometimes someone's just got to show up yeah, totally. Right. And you know what? Unfortunately, like a big part of marriage is, is not romantic, right? I mean, some of it is and a lot of it is, but some of it is really just like, you know, making things work together. And like, it's, it's a big part of it is just, you have to be around that person for the rest of your life and just make things work. So you have to, you have to get along. You have to be on the same page as a lot of things. And that's not the fun stuff, um, but it's an important part of relationships and, and marriage. I think God is speaking through you right now to me. That message that you just gave was actually for me. All right. Well, there, I didn't know where it came from, but now I know. Point for Eve. Okay, so I want to go over some statistics because just before this, we were talking about statistics and I did some research and feel free to correct them. I don't know if how accurate these are, but this is what I've been researching. One yeah. in 10 women will be raped. 16.9% of women will experience other sexual abuse. One in four women will experience severe physical violence, and 9.7% of women will be stalked by a man. These are terrifying statistics. Um, this interview is not about me, but I want everybody watching this interview to know that I spent two years in an extremely physically abusive relationship, and I almost died. So, I just want to make that very clear that nobody is removed from this. This can happen to anybody. So can you, well, can you say it's about you, but it, it is about you because it's about all of us. And it's just to show that there is not, um, you know, there's not a specific demographic of, of women that are affected by this. This affects women from all socioeconomic, um, you know, places and, and, you know, race, race. And uh, there's, there's so many, you know, people, especially when it comes to um, partner violence, it affects women from all walks of life. And so it's you, it's me, it's all of us. It is. So what do we do? Because if it, I mean, it's, a, and not that we want to say this is inevitable, this is going to happen to you, um, prepare for, for, for the worst, but seriously, like, what do we do? 
Yeah. So it's this hard conversation because <clears throat> first we'll, you know, start the conversation by recognizing it's actually not, you know, and, and it's not our responsibility, right? It's not our responsibility to be the ones to say, what do we do? Because it's, it's really like me as a mother of boys, it's my responsibility to raise men that are not going to continue to perpetrate crimes like this. So I think that's, that's the first um, angle that we take at this in terms of what do we do is we raise more confident and, and better men, right? That's a part of it. Now, assuming that is on its way, that's also something that we're doing. We also feel like, okay, well, while that's happening, and hopefully that happens over several generations, now what? Like, what, what kind of power can I take back? What control can I take back? And so that's an important conversation for women to have is, like you said, what do we do? Um, and, you know, such a big part of, of understanding this, both, both part of it is the, the, the knowledge, like you just explained, um, understanding the statistics, understanding what violence against women really looks like, and then assessing how, you know, if it's likely to happen in your life. So risk assessment is a big part of that. Um, and one, one statistic, I don't know if you mentioned, but over 78% of assaults against women are committed by people known to her. Right. So as you, you talked about more, yeah, so, so over three fourths of, of all assaults committed against women are, are, are by somebody known to her. And that's a really important thing to understand when we're talking about safety, because I think um, in general, when people think of self-defense, they think of, you know, understand like these, these extremely violent tactics, eye gouges and groin shots and all of these great tools that will be, you know, serve a, um, somebody who is, making you feel uncomfortable at a gas station or somebody who comes out from an alleyway and tries to take you away. Those are all very effective tools for many situations. However, when we look at the reality of this, we go, that's actually not what violence looks like in the majority of cases. Now, it, that, those things do happen and we need to be prepared for those as well. But, but that's I think what happens in the movies, right? Right. And, and, and on the media as well, because that's kind of our public perception of safety. Um, we don't want to, you know, that's like not a good news story to be like, oh, by the way, once again, today, this many women were, you know, hurt or killed or, you know, abused by their, their husbands or their uncles or their father or the coworker or their boss, you know, but that's the reality is that's actually what, you know, most of violence against women is looking like. So understanding that now we say, okay, well, what tools do we have and what can we invest in ourselves to, you know, increase our chances of surviving this or, or whether, you know, we don't always have a choice in the, in the fact of whether we, we, we are part of that statistic or not, right? Because again, it's not our responsibility. Um, however, there are things that we can do that can help reduce our risks, or if we are subjected to that, that we will, it helps us survive and get through it or, you know, get out of that situation. And so those are the tools that are important to understand. And those are, are scalable. So this is everything from understanding how to set boundaries with others, right? So boundary setting, um, verbal okay, assertiveness. How to set boundaries with, with other people. Let's just go right there because I think Let's that's so right it. Yes. <laughs> so great one. Um, and this is like a full on, I mean, boundary setting is so, it can, it can be such a deep conversation, but I think in general, this is the one thing that is probably most difficult for women. So obviously I teach women self-defense. I teach women um, how to physically protect themselves mm -hmm. using a, a, you know, a multitude of, of techniques based in Gracie Jiu-Jitsu that has been proven over centuries um, and is very effective, right? And these women kick butt and they do amazing. But what's interesting is the most difficult part of self-defense for many women to implement is this idea of setting boundaries with others and using their voice, finding their voice and using it. So they might say, okay, I can choke somebody out unconscious, I can break their arms, I can you know, do this kind of escape to get out from underneath somebody, but when it comes to using my voice and asserting my boundary, that is where it becomes challenging. And I think this is an issue for many women, and I can vouch for this too, because this was, this was my story as well. Um, you know, as somebody who was kind of always a, a people pleaser and always somebody who kind of assumed everyone else had good intentions, I think it's hard to um, you know, find that place of like, you know, at some point of uh, somebody else's comfort does not matter to me, right? So at the end of the day, like we've been told to be polite and be kind and smile at others. And, um, and really what that does is uh, unfortunately it, it makes us feel like that again is our responsibility to be this like ray of sunshine for other people, even if those people make us feel uncomfortable or even if we're in a situation where we say, you know what, I, I, I have this gut feeling, but then our, you know, kind of 
what has been taught to us either by society or by our, ourselves or who knows, um, we say, oh, well, I don't want to, I don't want to embarrass that person yeah, or I don't want to be rude. Our culture has created this that way. We, we, like we, yeah. the culture we live in is that we are just supposed to like ebb and flow with what is politically correct or expected of us. Yes. Right. And so, and a big part of that is, hey, smile and, you know, like, just be nice to others. And, and that is a great, and, you know, in general, we want to be kind to others who are kind to us, right? But what I'm talking about are these specific situations where someone makes you feel uncomfortable and we don't feel like we have the right to set a boundary and say, you know what, you are making me feel uncomfortable. I want you to stop, right? Because when we say that, now it's like, oh my gosh, am I going to offend them? Are they going to be upset? What if they did have good intentions and they, you know, and I made them feel bad? Like all these other things, these thoughts that cross our mind before the first thought that should cross our mind, which is what is my gut telling me right now? And what is my, what is my gut telling me about my safety and what I want for myself? And if you don't want to talk to this person or if this person is making you feel uncomfortable, we should be able to voice that. And that's a difficult thing for many women to do. And part of that, and that's a part of our program, the Women Empower program, is basically uh, role-playing that and practicing using our voice. What do we say? How do we say it? What are the kind of, what are ways that we can kind of escalate in terms of setting boundary setting? Where do we start with that and, and how far can it go? Um, and what's the best way to set a boundary? And really, when we're talking about boundary setting with others, clarity is key. So, um, you know, we talk about clarity is key with boundary setting. And um, there's... Uh, there's Yes. Um, and there is like, there's one, one particular tool that we suggest, and there's many ways to set boundaries. Let's just start there. T so many ways that you can go and people are really creative with it. You can be funny. You can use humor. You can, you can be straight up and just like tell them how it is. There's so many ways you can do it, whatever feels like the situation um, calls for. But in general, one of the tools that we talk about is three part statement. And really when you're setting up, so when you're setting a boundary with somebody to say, um, basically the, 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 the behavior that they're doing, um, how it makes you feel, and then your desired outcome. Okay, right? so behavior that they're doing, how they're yeah, making so identifying the, be the behavior, how it makes you feel, and then your desired outcome for that situation. Okay. So let's say that you're at a, um, a, a, an event with your coworkers, and one of your coworkers continues to ask you to, to drink more. And he's just like getting a little too friendly and like trying to push drinks on you. And you're kind of getting this vibe of like, look, I don't want to go here. I know he's drunk. I don't even want to, I don't feel comfortable. Right. And I don't want to drink anymore. And he keeps doing that. So that's, so what's, what the behavior is, is him continuing to ask me to drink. Um, how it makes me feel is disrespected or uncomfortable. And then my desired outcome is basically that I want him to stop. So in, how I would how I would say that then is like, look, you keep asking me to, to drink and I'm telling you I don't want to. When you do that, it makes me feel like you don't respect my wishes. And so I'd like you to stop. I'd like you to stop asking me to drink. Right. So those those are three very clear things. You identified what he did, how it made you feel, and then your desired outcome. I'd like you to stop that. And then That's there's powerful. really not much yeah, there's not much, and you can say it in a very calm and a very, um, you know, put together way. It doesn't have to be, I mean, you can say it however you naturally feel, but again, cl just clear. And then there's, now, can he still trample over that boundary? Absolutely. And people do it all the time. They say, oh my God, you're so uptight. Chill out. Like, what's your deal? And, you know, or, or they, they try to turn it around on you and we have to expect that too. But that's why it's just, you know, it, it can be a challenging thing. So boundary setting is a huge part of self-defense mindset. Um, but here's what's interesting is I believe that part of our, our ability to set boundary and our confidence in our boundary setting ability comes from this sort of physical confidence that we can gain from knowing that if he crosses that boundary, so I set a boundary with him, let's say, he has two options. He can either respect it or he can trample right over it. If he tramples over it, I know I have options, physical options to protect myself or my space. Yes, okay. And when you know you have something to fall back on, it's going to make it so much easier for you to set boundaries. And that's really the root of what we believe, you know, teaching self-defense does. It kind of gives women this freedom to, to express how they feel, to say what they want, um, and to, to set boundaries with others, knowing that if this person crosses that, they have options. But when you don't have options and you say, if I say this and then he keeps doing it, then what? You know, like, now what do I do? Yeah. And so having that, oh, if he does that, then I do this. And then I walk away and he follows me. Then I know how to, you know, create space. If he grabs me, then I know how to neutralize that. 
it's like as it continues to escalate, you have options for every step of the way in these types of interactions. Um, and that's where I really believe, you know, investing in self-defense and understanding and, and learning self-defense is so valuable because it gives you the confidence to, you know, basically you've invested so much into your personal safety by learning these physical techniques that you're much more likely to use these other tools like our verbal assertiveness or boundary setting um, to basically, you know, keep, keep yourself safe. I want to share something with you because as you're saying all of this, I think, ah, oh, I really wish I would have had that because I didn't have, and I still don't. And so this is really making me rethink because I've got two little kids. If I'm taking the groceries out from the grocery store one day and something happens to me, I've got two babies that I need to get home to. Right. And so this is the world that we live in. We also live in a beautiful world, but I just want to share something with you because I remember being at such a low in this relationship, the one that I was telling you about at the very beginning of this, I was young, I was 18. And I remember being at such an ultimate low and having no way out that my prayer was that he would hurt me so bad that people would have to notice mm. so that they would pull me away from him. Because right now it was just like, I was hiding. And until he actually left his handprints around my neck and ripped my face apart and left bruises all over my body. Did anybody stand up for me? And had I had this, I could have done it for myself. And you know, that's, you know, that's a beautiful reflection that you have. And thank you for sharing that with, with me and with your viewers. I think it's really important to hear. Um, and you know what, that is ultimately all you're doing is allowing yourself to be the person that says, I don't, you know, it doesn't have to be up to anyone else or I don't need anyone's judgment call on this. I can, I trust my own judgment on this and I trust my gut and I, and whatever I feel like I need, I can assert and I can ask for that. Yeah. And so it really does come down to worthiness and it comes down to self-worth and this feeling of, you know, I, I am worth protecting and I'm worth defending and I'm worth setting boundaries for. So let's go back to the self-worth thing because Here's the thing that I know, you know, through, through my clients, I get them when they feel they're most unworthy. Okay. And not, I can't actually say that actually I have one client that is suffering in a domestic uh, relationship right now, but I can't say that any of my other clients are going through this right now, but I know that when they're coming to me, they're feeling unworthy. So I can't imagine, I can't imagine because I was there how unworthy somebody inside of this kind of relationship feels right now. And I mean, I'm hearing, you know, you got to know you're worth it. You got to know you're worth it. But sometimes you just don't. And I, I, I saw on your, on your Instagram, you know, love yourself first. But what if you can't? Yeah, it's a, it's, this is the, this is like the million dollar question and oh. battle that so many people face. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you kind of our, on, on our end and what, 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 what I kind of believe about this. Um, and why I think that this, you know, this program that we, that I have co-created with my husband and that, that we offer is so transformational for many, because sometimes it's hard to just say, you're worth it. You are, you know, you, do you see your value and trying to sh explain to people like how valuable they, they truly are and what, you know, how they deserve everything that they want in life. That's a hard thing to just say to somebody and to force them to believe. But what I find is that when somebody is, again, like physically investing into themselves, so it's almost like now it's, hap it's kind of happening from the outside in instead of the inside out. But it's, what's interesting is your body. So as these women learn to, again, defend themselves and they're every single time they learn a, a technique, basically what you're telling them is if someone tries to hurt you, you're going to fight, right? And little by little, every single time. And then once they start to master those techniques and, and really feel like, oh, I can now protect myself. What that's doing, it's almost like sending this message to your brain from the physical action of your body that you are worth fighting for, oh. right? And so even if you're not, obviously we tell that we tell them that, and that is a part of this, this journey, but they have to believe it for themselves. And some, for, for many, that's almost what it has done is it's like a physical, um, manifestation of that self-worth where you're saying, if, why else would I be learning this? Then unless I am worth 
something and I'm worth fighting for. And I'm now have learned how to fight for myself. And so it's this beautiful journey of learning this stuff. And now it kind of penetrating inwards and then you reflecting and going, I have just invested into my own myself, which means I'm worthy, which means, you know, like it's, it's your way of, of learning that by almost this kind of behavior and, and this investment that you've, you've given into yourself. Um, and, you know, it's obviously, it's a journey for everyone. So it's not something that happens overnight, but we have seen it over and over again. And so many, you know, a lot of transformational um, moments have happened in, in our program with our students. And it's a really beautiful thing, but it's such, it's just such a hard thing to, you know, people have to find this, this belief on their own and we can tell them and we can reinforce and we can be support systems for them um, as we hopefully are with our friends and our sisters and our, you know, mothers and everyone, but ultimately they have to discover that for themselves. Yeah. Why do you care so much? Ah, goodness. You know, I, I care for many, for, I, I would say many reasons. I think the top two is that I, you know, like you are reflecting on right now, see how I did not have a lot of these tools in my life mm -hmm. for many years. And I think about how, you know, if these tools can be something that's given to younger women at a younger age, how that will help them, um, you know, deal with these situations that statistically, unfortunately, are likely to happen to them, um, which then also increases their that you know betters their life overall because we know how going through these difficult things can have a, a big toll on on your you know this, these types of traumas can affect us very deeply and take a lot of work to overcome. So if we can help reduce our risks of encountering those traumas to begin with, then I think that's a huge service to the world. Um, and I and I see myself in many of, of my students and many of, of the women there. Um, so I think that's part of it. And also, I just think that this is, women are going to be, women are, are such an important part of our world. And I think anything that we can do to you know, empower women to find, to reach that point of, um, you know, like kind of true equality, not, not, oh, we can both vote and we can, but where, where it's not even like a thought of, oh, wow, there's a, you know, like the first female president or you know oh wow there's a a, a woman ceo that's such no, an interesting it's not even thing a conversation person. anymore it's, it's not anymore. even a conversation yeah. yeah that it's just like well yeah they're both humans why would there be a, like what's the big deal yeah. um that that reaching that goal but was it and i really believe that there is something about physical kind of intimidation and physical power that plays a role there and so when you give women that physical power back it just kind of levels the playing field so that's another reason why i really believe in in what we're doing so I have to be honest with you, the thought of becoming, you know, like just learning these techniques, it, it's overwhelming to me. Like, first of all, I'm not strong. Second of all, I'm not really a fighter. I, I'm just not really a fighter. Um, and third of all, like how long would it take me to actually get to a point where I could defend myself? And I know that with your program, it, it's fast. It, I mean, it's, it's not easy. It takes practice, but it's, it's faster than you might think it would be. Right. Am I right? Yeah. So you are like pretty much every other student that has ever walked into our door. <laughs> okay. Automatically. Um, one, you have, you have some doubt about your abilities and whether this is something that makes that is you can do or that is right for you. Um, and that again is part of it. That is that like, is it even possible for me to actually defend against somebody bigger? Like that just doesn't even sound like it's, you know, if you especially if you don't see yourself as like this stellar athlete, you know, if you're like a superb athlete, it might you might say, oh yeah, I could do that. But many women don't don't identify as that, um, and that is where you know it's what this program and and basically Gracie Jiu Jitsu in general. That's what this is based on. It's a it's a self defense system that was created for the weaker person to defend against a larger opponent, and it's hard to even imagine how that can work until you really experience it. And once you do, you go, oh my gosh, like these light, the light bulb just goes off and you go, I basically, it's kind of like cheating. It, it really is like, but you have to, it's just a, a series of, of techniques and principles, um, principles like leverage and timing and energy efficiency. And those are things that everyone has. So if we, if our program was only going to be you know, good for people who are athletic and strong and powerful, then we've done a huge disservice to the world because those aren't the people who need this the most. They're not the, the people, people who are getting attacked. 
are the ones who don't consider themselves as fighters or as athletes, and they still need to be able to. And so we pride ourselves in the fact that anyone can do this program. And we have seen this by having women, we have had women as old as 70 years old going through this program and like getting all the way through getting their pink belt and doing amazing. And then we have young girls going through it too. So, um, and people from all, you know, all sizes, ages, walks of life. Um, and then the other idea is that, you know, in terms of saying, oh, I'm not a fighter. I think every, every woman is a fighter because we, we have this primal instinct in us that every single woman has, um, that is probably even fiercer than most men yes. when you tap into it. Like I, you, you may say, well, I'm not a fighter. Well, I know you felt a little bit of that crazy, right? At some point in your life where you're just like, oh, I will go. <laughs> yes. Every woman has that. And it, so it just because it's not a part of our everyday lives, which is probably a good thing, right? Um, it's there. And so it's kind of finding that and saying it's okay for that to be there and finding the purpose of that thing, uh, that fighting nature and where it comes into our life and at the right times and how to hone it and how to um, tap into it when we need it. Because every woman is and you are a fighter. So, and I know that because you're here today and based on, you know, your stories of your past, you are a fighter and you're here. Um, and, and most women are. Yeah, and most women are. Um, but in terms of how long this program takes, so, you know, we, we are, our program is 20 lessons. It's 20 lessons, oh, um, wow. but it's more like, it's 20 lessons, but it's more like 60, around 60 techniques, um, individual techniques within those lessons. And so typically, you know, it depends. So we have this program that is available on DVD and online. So some women are learning from home. They're training with their sister or partner or friend, and they're learning from home. And then they can train as many days as they want a week. Um, here at, in Torrance at our headquarters, we, uh, we have a class twice a week. So for women, let's say a woman doing twice a week, typically it's anywhere from six months to a year of, of training twice a week that they then go through this program enough where they develop re the reflexes that they need. And then they test, um, through the program and then they earn what is basically a pink belt. Um, and the pink belt is kind of our symbol of completion of the program. So that's for that. They test the reflexes. We go into a private room and we basically attack them from all angles and we, we, you know, practice these techniques and they, we also make sure they understand the psychological components as well. And yeah, and they test out of it. So anywhere from six months to a year, and what we offer um, at our school is basically once you earn your pink belt, you can train uh, and come to women empowered classes for the rest of your life for free. So you're essentially, it is a short term, you know, commitment at financially and, and obviously your time as well, but something that is, you're going to have as a lifelong skill and that you can, it's a perishable skill, obviously. So we want you to come in as often as you can to come brush it up, but also to then be there to support other women. So the new women who come in, we kind of see our, our more um, advanced students as like mentors for our, our incoming students. And that's a really important part of what we're creating here is not just, hey, come in and learn some self-defense. It's a community of women that is supporting and building one another. And it's very hard to find that in many places where there's not a competition or B, it's kind of like, you know, in yoga, it's like you're all in a room and you're like, hey, cool, nice to see you. And then you walk away. Like you might make a friend or you might not. This, you can be as introverted as I am and you are gonna get close and personal and, and intimate with somebody because of the the, con the nature of what you're doing. And there's so much trust that you're building with your training partners. You're saying, okay, when I tap, you're going to let go because if you don't, you're going to break my arm, <laughs> you know? So there's, there's this level of trust that is built. That's a beautiful thing and quickly builds um, beautiful relationships. You are beautiful from the inside out and you've given a beautiful gift to the audience that we talked about before. So we'll drop the link right down here for that Yay. DVD set. Um, awesome. I'm getting it. I'm going to get it because, oh, that's so cool. Oh, and we didn't even get to talk about your husband. He's, I mean, I don't know him, but I've been watching you guys on your Instagram. Follow her on Instagram. We'll drop that down here as well. Um, Eve is really, truly amazing. And the gift that you're giving with this DVD is that we can do it right in our homes. We can do it, you know, in the quiet hours of the night, we can learn these things when it's quiet and we can hide for a second and no one needs to know, no one needs to know what we're doing. And you know, what else is really cool about Eve? I have a feeling that if you're stuck or if you feel helpless, she is just a message away. And so, am I. and so. Am I. So, Eve, is there anything else you want to add? I am just like blown away with what a, you know, I didn't know who you were going to be. I mean, I had an idea because I know God gives me amazing people 
So I'm just so grateful for you and your heart and your service to this world. Thank you. Thanks, Tara. And you are offering an incredible service as well by communicating uh, all of this, this important information and other tools for empowerment, uh, which you do. So keep, keep up the great work. So before we go, I want you to look into the eyes of the woman who has no voice, who has no power, who is maybe has a black eye and tell her what she needs to do right now. You are worth fighting for. You are worth fighting for. And the moment you believe that, I will be here to support you in whatever way you need me to be. Oh, it's so beautiful, Eve. Thank you so much, girlfriends. I don't want to keep, I, wanna, I don't want to take any more of your time. I don't want to keep you. So have a beautiful, blessed day. Thank you for being on the Smart Woman Show. And I'll talk to you later. Awesome.